Sasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, this video is because this was the most popular suggestion in the comments, so I decided I would do another version and doing as you guys had thought of. So, up here in the top right hand corner is playing where I made a vellum little shaker. Now the reason that I do it in a vellum pocket is that so people can't see into the inside when you have done your writing. So it's a two-way pocket, you can see straight through it, but the vellum just makes it tricky enough that you can't see or read the writing. So it feels like a bit of a win-win. So we are going to create a vanilla cardstock uh, card base here and then I'm going to do somewhat similar uh, but I decided I would do a totally different design just to keep it nice and fresh. So here you can see I put some mint tape on, I'm going to use some nested dies to create this little uh, archway on the front. Now this is of course instead of my oval that I used last time. If you're interested in checking out that last video, I will put a link to it down below, but I the suggestion was that instead of using two layers of vellum, how about we use one layer of vellum and one layer of acetate on the front. So hopefully you still won't be able to see the writing on the inside. And it's just something a little bit different. So here you can see I have the front layer there, the card front, and the front layer of the card base. They are joined together with that little bit of mint tape. And then I have one of the archways that has cut through both layers of my vanilla cardstock. So that's perfect. You don't have to use the vanilla card base. Any color, any card base is good to go. You can do a shaped card base. You could do anything. Um, now I'm choosing one size bigger of the nested dies to create a frame. This is how I always go about creating a frame and it's one of the fantastic things about having nesting dies is that you always have this ability to frame whatever you have cut out. So it is nice and easy to create one. I use a couple of pieces of mint tape. This is the cutting blade side up that I have there. This way I can just make sure that they have a nice even amount of frame all the way around. I chose to do it out of this gold glitter cardstock. This is more like printed glitter rather than rough glitter, which is just works well for me. <laughs> now, here is the layer of vellum. I'm going to use the lawn fawn vellum. This is the only vellum I use. I love this vellum because I can heat emboss on it. I can dry emboss through like with embossing folders. I can do all the good things all with one type of vellum. It's definitely more of a heavyweight type of vellum. And so that is going to help here uh, with the see-through factor. So I'm just getting a piece of vellum that is a decent size to go behind my arch. Then I have a piece of acetate. Again, I love this acetate because one of the main reasons is that it actually says on the packaging that it is works perfectly for die cutting. Now, some acetates will die cut beautifully and others you will struggle and struggle. So I have found this one, the Hero Arts one, and I stick with it. So these are the two products that I'm going to pop together. We're going to create pretty much a similar little pocket as we did last time, except for obviously we won't be able to have a fold. I will need to be able to close up all four corners. Now the key is here to make sure that you overlap your adhesive. Make sure that all of your little bits are touching so you can see I actually peel up the end um, just to make sure I get it all of the way and I get that other little bit that I've left a little bit short as well just to make sure that everything is closed up nicely. I go ahead and take off three pieces of the release paper from the double sided adhesive and then that way it just makes it easier for me when I'm popping in the um, sequins and things like that that they're not going to get caught on that bit of adhesive as I put it past. So there you can see we've got a perfect little pocket with acetate in the back and the vellum in the front or the other way around, whichever way you'd like it. Now, first of all, I thought I was going to use sort of purple and gold. That was what I was going for. I put some of the purple, uh, the purple flakes are kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. They are very, very lightweight. They're featherweight. They're kind of like, um, they're like flakes or I'm not very good at describing it, but <laughs> they're kind of, they're very lightweight and they're very flat. I put some gold sequins in and I didn't like this at all. This wasn't what I was going for. I didn't like it. So I'm actually going to get a little piece of paper, pop the majority of this out. I don't need to get it clean because I decided I want to go down the blues route. I am a blue girl through and through and maybe that's just why, but I often try and go out of my comfort zone and use colors that I'm not comfortable with, but sometimes they just don't look right to me and this just didn't look right. So instead of using the purple, I'm going to use the blues version. I had the white version 
version of the flakes out there on my table as well. So that is always just a really nice neutral or you can tone down some of the blue um, or whichever colour you are using. So the white is very handy too. Then I went with these iridescent sequins that are going to go in with the blue and I was much happier with this little combination here. The iridescent sequins have, I think, three different sizes in there, so I'm sort of picking out the smaller ones. The larger ones are pretty big, uh, and I didn't really want them to dominate, so I'm just putting in a few. It doesn't really matter how many are in there. I don't need the shaker to be absolutely full. I really like creating, and I must say I prefer to create flat shakers. I'm not a huge fan of the bulky foam tape. I try not to make really bulky cards. Uh, I like the more slim ones. And so these kind of pockets for shaker pockets are right up my alley. And so that's why I love the little um, shaker materials that I put on the inside. The little flakes are perfect. They are glittery. They're glistening. They're lightweight. They weigh absolutely nothing. And yet they're absolutely stunning. And they move around well. So... Now when it comes to the front that I want to decorate, this is the Sizzix Layered Bird. There are a couple of different versions of this. I purchased one of them. I wanted to purchase two, but uh, they are somewhat similar. I'll link both of them down below in case you want to check them out. But I ended up with this one because I am not a huge fan of layered stamps. Well, I would say I would like to be, but I just don't have the patience or the skills to line them up perfectly every time. And that can be frustrating for me. So when I saw this one, and there is only two layers for everything. <laughs> I mean, there is a couple of separate sentiment stamps, but there's only two layers for the birds and the flowers. Um, and so I like that. I like that I don't have to line up a whole lot of things. Uh, so I'm going to be using some vanilla cards. So it's the same one that I use for my card base. You could absolutely use white here. That would be fine. Um, I'm going to use some Versafine Clear inks for this. Now I'm just using a little bit of the Pineco Brown ink to do his little feet. Um, and there is also going to be a little bit of the branch that he is sitting on as well. Now you could also use your finger dobbers to get in these different little bits of different colours here if you wanted to. This also looks stunning. I've used this stamp in lots of other videos already but uh, it also looks perfectly stunning just to do it in two different colours the whole thing. I decided to get a little bit more fancy here and do several colours but you absolutely don't have to do that at all. So I was just having a play. I had the time and I was really enjoying it. Here we are coming up to the layered part of the bird. It's so easy. You just plonk it right on top and we are good to go. So the bird has two layers and then all the little flowers and things, they have their next layer. Then I am going to add in just using a little brush with some ink. I suspect this is Distress Oxide ink, but I really just picked up the brush because it had some green on it. And I'm filling in some of these little leaves. I'm also going to do the little tree branch or log that he's sitting on. I'll do that in a little bit of brown. These little brushes are fantastic fantastic for coloring little pieces of little stamping or uh, images and things like that. Now with not too much effort I managed to get this gorgeous little birdie. I think this would even look stunning. You could just have this on a card front but I decided at this point that I actually wanted to fussy cut it out. Now I will admit that this is not usually an image that I would fussy cut because those flowers and leaves are just not my style of fussy cutting. I could have just done the bird but I really liked the idea of having this image right across the front of that archway. I sort of knew how I wanted it to go in my head but I just wasn't exactly sure how it was going to go. So I did leave a bit of the vanilla cardstock and I think it looks fine. That's okay too. You don't always have to have super perfect fussy cutting. I'm taking a white gel pen and just very very roughly going over some little highlights on the bird, a few on the branches, just to add in a little bit more dimension. Not too much at all, a little bit on the flowers. You could always use like a little glitter pen or some stickles or something like that to add a little bit more to the birdie too. That would be fun. Now it is the part where we're going to put together everything in the card. So adding in that gorgeous pocket that we created. Here I'm making sure that everything lines up. When I am card making, before I stick things down, I always test them. Make sure they line up before I add adhesive because... There is nothing more frustrating than realizing that the die shifted or you die cut the wrong way or something was backwards or something like that and something doesn't line up and you've just stuck it down onto the adhesive. So I try and avoid that. I'm putting down some double-sided tape on the inside of the card 
and this is where I'm going to put my little packet. Now I chose to go the acetate side down with the vellum at the back. You could absolutely switch this around but I think this gives you the clearest view to the goodies on the inside and then the acetate sort of blanks it um, but also the sequins and things blank you from being able to see the writing on the inside too so I quite like that. Add a little bit more adhesive around the outside and then we're going to cover up all that outside mess with the second frame that we made right at the very beginning of the video. In this way, everything is super, super neat and tidy. You sort of can't see any of the edges. You can't see any of the vellum pocket edges. So everything is sort of swept up and nice and tidy when you add this bit on. I like it on the inside because people aren't necessarily looking for the joins on the inside. So I sometimes, that's why I like popping it on the inside, the extra layer. But of course, you could do it on the outside if you wanted to as well. Sometimes if your card doesn't shut perfectly, this one is fine. But you may need to take a slither off the inside card front that you put in there just so that it can uh, not hit that fold quite right but this time I was okay. Now my original thought was to have the little bird sort of sitting in the corner perched on the corner but luckily because of the way that I had fussy cut this out I actually wanted him to go right in the center across the branch but the stamp didn't extend down that far so we're going to need to work on that just a little bit. I prefer him centered rather than down where I originally thought that he would go and that's okay too so we can make that happen. This is sort of where I thought he would roughly go to begin with and this looks gorgeous. I like this as well but I like him in the center better. So we are going to turn the stamp around that we use and extend the bottom of that branch. So I'm just using exactly the same stamp turning it around using the same pine cone um, brown ink that I used to begin with and then this won't be perfect but nobody's going to be looking close so we extend that little branch down onto the other bit that I had fussy cut so lucky I didn't chop that off to begin with then I add a little bit more of that brown ink this is the vintage photo all the way up just to keep it the same because I think it's a different ink than what I used before and that's okay filling in some of those little vanilla cardstock pieces um, but that's it's not perfect if you look up close but it's absolutely fine I think this looks stunning on the front of this little card even when we add in our frame it's all the little details that is going to really make this card pop on the back of this frame I could have used some stickered adhesive or double sided adhesive when I actually die cut it and that would have saved this part but I didn't do that because sometimes I feel like it's a bit there's a lot of wastage when I do that so I just use some liquid glue it's going straight down onto cardstock not onto the uh, acetate or vellum so I know it's going to adhere perfectly well look how good those shaker elements move on the inside this is a really clean card and I really like the outcome now my gorgeous little birdie, I'm going to put double sided adhesive on the back of him because when I am adhering things to acetate or vellum, I find that double sided tape is going to work really much better than using liquid glue. Liquid glue takes a long time to set on vellum or acetate and it also is liable to move around and sometimes fold or bend or um, warp a little bit. So I'm going to use some double sided tape on the back of this little guy. I've just sort of measured him up where I want him roughly to go cut the corner so it's going to sit nicely inside of that frame and I was going to put a sentiment on this one but I actually just like it as is. I love this card. I love the colours in the end that we went with. I really like the gorgeous little bird. I think this could be used for so many occasions. So I hope that you have enjoyed seeing this version of the card that so many of you asked for in the comment section. I love it when you guys request things. I'm happy to take requests to see what I can make and deliver. I did have a little helper come in at this point and this is why you're not going to get to see much of the finished card. He swooped this one away and began to make his own, pretty much copying what I had done. Now if you would like to see any of the supplies I have used, there is always a list down below with links in case you would like to check them out. There is also a link to the Buy Me A Coffee in case you would like to support my page. But other than that, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.